So let's move on. But we did finish talking about this expected value, expected value and variance. So probability distributions are summarized. Two measures, expected value, which is we can just think of it as the mean and the variance. It's the same as we've talked about it from day one. All right. So uh, uh, the mean is just the center of the distribution and the variance is about spread. When we are talking about probability distribution, those quantities are population quantities. So that's why we talk about mu and standard deviation. So when we deal in population, uh, sorry, when we deal in probabilities, we're almost always talking about the populations. All right. So let's figure out how to do this with discrete variables. Um, you can do this with continuous random variables, but you have to do a sort of integration with calculus. So again, we're going to not worry too much about that. We talk about when we uh, talk about an expected value, we write it um, like this, e of x, right? So when you see an e of x, just think of mean, right? This is just a mean expected value, right? And what we're going to learn is this is actually uh, more specifically, this is a, uh, a, a weighted mean, weighted mean, a weighted average. It's probably what you've heard before, a weighted average. So let's see how this looks, a weighted average. Expected value of x is the sum of across all x's of our x times an f of x. So remember this f of x right here, this part. This is a probability. Probability. And then this x for discrete random variable, this is a count. Right, so this is a number, like 0, 1, 2, 3. It's a whole number. And then this is the probability of that whole number. Right? And then we do that for every single one, and then sum those all up, and that gives us our expected value of x. And down here, this is our variance, right? And the standard deviation, so this is sigma squared variance, right? So what is sigma you know, without squared is the standard deviation. This is the sum, here's x minus mu, so we'd find mu, the difference from the mean for each x. Remember, this is a count. This is a count, because we're talking about discrete random variables, so this is some kind of count, minus the mean that we kept up here, and square that, so the squared difference from the mean, and then multiply it by each of the probability. Oops, probability. Uh, and so this is sort of a weighted average of the mean, uh, of the mean of the deviation squared, right? And then if we want to find the, the standard deviation, we just take the square root of that. This is a, a shortcut that we can do that also works, right? So if you work this all out, you get this. You just take the square of each of these counts, multiply it by the probability, sum those all up, and then at the very end, we subtract the mean squared. It gives us the same answer. So we're going to show how to do that. So as before the standard deviation, note this sigma can also be used as a square root of the variance. So we know that already. All right, so let's work through an example. So the very beginning of these notes, we said, let's let x equal the number of cars sold on a lot. Number of, if we're a, a used car salesman, this is important, number of cars sold um, on a lot in one day. Okay, and we came up with some numbers before where we decided, well, you could sell zero, you could sell one, you could sell two, you could sell three, or you could sell four. We decided that was all that you could do. And then we had a probability for each of these f of x, right? We decided that was a probability. So this is a discrete distribution. It's not a binomial distribution, although you, you could kind of come up with a binomial distribution this way too. But this is just a discrete, a given discrete distribution, which means you just know this. It was just given to you maybe from past data, but we can't really, you know, we don't have a good formula to describe what this is, but this is in a table form, right? So it's still discrete. So here's our f of x's. All right, so how do we find the expected value? So how, what's sort of the average value? Well, one way to do this is to sort of, we could you know, kind of simulate this, right? We could go through and see uh, a whole bunch of like maybe a million average days and then see what the average is. So we could, maybe we'll do this in class, right? We could do this with Excel pretty fast and I'll show you how to do it. Uh, that's one way to do it, but we can actually do it a little bit more theoretic way. And how do we do that? Well, we, we find this new column x times f of x. Right? This is what the formula says. So we just take this x, whatever that x is, and multiply it by the probability. So let's do that for every one of these. 0 times 0 0.02, sorry, by 0 0.2 is 0. 1 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.3. 2 
2 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.6, 3 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.3, and 4 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.4. And then we're going to sum this all up. And this sum will give us uh, will give us our expected value, and it comes out to be 1.6, right? 1.6. So this is what's expected. So let's actually let's draw this out graphically and see if this makes sense. So let's do a little chart here. And we can say, look, here's zero cars. Here's one car. Here's two cars. Here's three cars. Here's four cars. And that was all we had, right? So. And then this is f of x, f of x, and it would look something like that. So here's 0, it was 0 0.2, 1 was 0.3, so a little higher, 2 was 0.3, a little higher, 3 was 0.1, so smaller, yeah, that should be even smaller, and 4 was 0.12, right? So what did we find? Well, we found 1.6, which is like right here, is essentially our average, right? 1.6, 1.6, our expected value, which makes a lot of sense. If you look at this, it actually looks right, right? Not quite one and a half, a little bit further over here. That's the balance point, right? This is the average. So how do we find that? It's just the weighted average of these. So if we know the probabilities of each of these happening, we can find the expected value, right? Expected value. All right, so pretty easy. So let's talk about the standard deviation. The, uh, there's a few steps in actually calculating the standard deviation. So let's just write these out. I'm going to change colors, actually. Steps um, for standard deviation. So this will be helpful if we kind of look back at the, the notes on the page before, and we'll write these out. So step number one, we're going to create x squared column. All right, let's look at our notes up here and see why we're going to do this. So we're going to follow this guy right here. So first we're going to find this x squared column. Okay, so that's step number one. Create x squared column. Step number two, multiply. Multiply uh, x squared column. my f of x column. Okay, let's see where that fits in up here. Let's see if we can look at it. All right, so we've figured out this x squared column. Now we're going to multiply by the f of x. Can you guess what the next step is? Well, we got to sum these all up. All right, so that's the next step. Sum the results. So number three, sum the results. And then step four. Step four, we're going to subtract mean squared, mean squared from this sum, from this sum. Let's see what that looks like up here. So here's, we're going to subtract mean squared, right? So we did all this. We found the x squared, we multiplied it by each of the fx, we summed those all up, we got that done. Now we're just going to subtract mean squared from that. And since we're dealing with standard deviations, this was the formula for variance, then the last step is to take the square root of all that stuff, right? So I'll step number five. Take square root. All right, so let's give it a try with our same data. So this is actually kind of done for us on the next page, which is nice. All right, so here's our... Here's our x's, here's our f of x, here's our x squared. So this was what, step one? Step one. So I would do this in Excel, right? I would type these in Excel and these in Excel. And then this just is just a formula that says this guy squared. Okay? And then here's step two. Right? Step two. Right, so I just take this number right here and multiply it by the f of x. Right, so this is x squared, x squared. This is f of x. And then at the very end, we're going to sum these right here. So this is what? Step three. And then what do we do next? Well, step four, we take the sum and subtract the mean 
squared, right? Which is, well, the sum right here is 4. We found right here 4 minus, and the page before we found that the mean was 1.6 squared. So that equals 1.44. And this is the variance. Right? We'd be done right here if we asked for the variance. But we, we want more, so we go step 5. And the standard deviation. Standard deviation. Deviation uh, equals the square root of 144. Oh, what? Sorry, 1.44. 1.44, which equals 1.2. All right. Cool. So this 1.2 is the same as we talked about the standard deviation before. We can think of this as uh, on average. Again, not quite right, but on average, the deviation from the mean of 1.6 is 1.2. Right, so this sort of the spread around the means one point two. All right, so this you know th these idea of, of mean and standard deviations come back from what we did descriptive statistics. Although now we're trying to figure out how to do this when we we have a probability distribution. We don't have raw data anymore, but we have a distribution of the probability. Then we can easily find this out. It's the same thing. It's nothing different. We think of weighted average, uh, and the formula is pretty straightforward. Follow the steps for standard deviation. We can do it no problem and just know that this is just the sum. All right, so that's it for these sets of notes, I believe. Uh, yeah, so we'll get some practice doing this stuff in class and, and then uh, some homework assignments doing this. Hopefully we'll, we'll get used to this. But the main topics of these set of notes that we're supposed to take away is that now we're gonna deal with probability distributions as opposed to just probability events. The probability distributions can be divided into two things, discrete distributions or continuous distributions. Continuous distributions, well, we looked at two of those. We looked at the uniform distribution and the normal distribution. And then we also looked for discrete. We looked at binomial distributions. And then we looked at stuff like this that we that's on this page in front of me. That's, uh, these are just what, uh, these are just given discrete distributions, right? Well, somebody will just give it to us. So these ones we can't sort of give a formula for. The ones that we have formulas for, we have really easy ways to do this. Uh, either just find the area underneath the square, right? If it's a uniform distribution, we just find the area. If it's normal or binomial distribution, we use Excel to tell us what's what's on the left tail. If we need to find something that's on the right tail, we have to tweak it just a little bit, but it's not too hard. Um, so once we get some practice doing this, this is really not hard. But we got to learn how to do this because in the future, um, when we start actually doing some uh, some more experiments and actually testing theories, we're going to do this. This is exactly how we're going to test theories. Is we're going to say, look, here's the result from our theory, right? How does that compare to what we actually expected, right? And if it's like really not probable at all, then we would say, well, then something's different. Something's wrong. Something's something's not what we expected, and so our theory is maybe justified, right, or something like that. So we're going to get to that in a few weeks, but we got to learn these basics to get there. So get through these notes, make sure we kind of understand these notes. We'll get some practice doing this the next time around. All right, have a good uh, week or weekend whenever you're watching the show. It's time for bed.